patient outcomes for acutely decompensated illness have not improved despite continued breakthroughs in the management of chronic heart failure. Heart failure patients in hospitals across the world continue to struggle and have numerous complications, with 16.5% dying during their initial treatment. A look at the pathophysiology of acute decompensated heart failure reveals some potential new therapy options. The heart can't pump enough blood at normal cardiac filling pressures to meet the metabolic demands of the brain, kidneys, heart, and other essential organs while they're in heart failure. Neurohormones are released as a response. Certain neurohormones assist keep blood pressure in check, but they also make heart failure worse. Renin, a neurohormone generated by the kidneys in response to decreased fusion and increased sympathetic activity, is one of these neurohormones. Renin activates the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system by breaking angiotensinogen in the liver to create angiotensin 1, which is then converted to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 binds to blood vessel walls in the lungs, causing vasoconstriction. Angiotensin 2 also causes endothelial cells to discharge endothelium. Angiotensin 2 and endothelium bind to vascular smooth muscle, causing coronary and systemic arteries and veins to contract. While vasoconstriction helps to keep blood pressure in check, it can also have unfavorable consequences. The weakened heart, for example, must pump harder against higher resistance in the systemic arteries, while narrowing of the coronary arteries further limits oxygen flow to the myocardial. Venous constriction also contributes to the displacement of fluid into the lungs and other tissues. The adrenal glands are stimulated to secrete aldosterone by antioxidant number 2. Aldosterone allows the salt to be reabsorbed into the bloodstream by the kidneys. Water, sodium, and water retention all contribute to a state of fluid overload, which is aggravated by venous constriction. Pulmonary edema prevents gaseous exchange in the lungs. The physical act of breathing is made more difficult by the accumulation of fluid in and around the lungs. Shortness of breath and weariness are common symptoms of acute left-sided heart failure. Apart from the action of the RAS, when right-sided heart failure occurs, fluid collects in the liver and legs. The body attempts to maintain blood pressure using other methods, such as the release of epinephrine from the adrenal glands and norepinephrine from sympathetic nerve terminals. These catecholamines increase heart rate and contractility, in addition to causing arterial and venous constriction. Over time, chronic volume overload and the activity of angiotensin II, aldosterone, and endocrine stimulate pathologic cardiac remodeling the interstitial fibrosis, and biocyte apoptosis. Associated with cardiac remodeling decreases heart wall elasticity, further inhibiting the heart's ability to relax and pump effectively. The neural response to heart failure produces vasoconstriction, fluid retention, and increased heart rate and contractility, to name a few effects. As a result, these activities set in motion a vicious cycle of myocardial damage and worsening heart failure. Fortunately, other neurohormonal responses, such as endophilin, epinephrine, and norepinephrine, control the activity of the RAS. Thanks for watching, and do not forget to subscribe and never miss an update, thank you.